InDesign is specifically created for print, so it has some tools that will make your life a lot easier. I will cover all the tools you need to get started, plus some more advanced ones in under 10 minutes. Let's jump in! To set up your document, you want to choose the size and the orientation. InDesign comes with some template options that can be really great if you're unsure about the exact measurements of a document format. We want to choose how many pages to include, but you can also change this later on. So you can just start with something you think will be close to what you need. To help us create nice layouts, you also have the option to add columns and gutter, meaning the space between the columns. And there are other ways to add grids later, so I usually don't change anything here, but I keep it as one column. But like, play around with it, see what you think is best. Finally, let's set up our bleed. Bleed is an area that's added to the outside of your design that acts as a safety zone when we print. Even though printers are fairly accurate, there can be a little shifting when we're actually printing or the cut can happen at a slightly different place than we intended. So having this extra safety area means that we don't end up with white edges or something getting cut off. Make sure you're using bleed, but that we're not placing any crucial information in that area. A pretty standard bleed is three to five millimeters or one eighth to a quarter of an inch. Once you're inside the document, let's start with pages and spreads. So we're going to start using parent pages. So basically these are templates where everything you add will appear on every page that has this template applied. And this is perfect for little details like names or dividers. So to edit the template, just double click on the template and start adding in your different elements. Then to apply your template to your pages, right click on the page and choose apply parent to pages. You can create different parents for different kinds of pages and you have a choice of which one you choose to apply. If you want a page to stop using the parent template, just right click and choose override all parent items. This will still leave them on the page, but you can now remove some or all of them. Finally, let's set up page numbers so they'll update automatically for every page. To do this, create a text box in your parent template that's big enough for the highest number in your document. Then without adding anything in the box, have it selected and choose type, insert special character, markers, current page number. And it will say something like A here, since we are in the A template, but if you're choosing to save and then heading to your actual pages, you'll see that it has updated the page number. You'll need to set this up for both sides if you have facing pages set up like spreads. But what if you don't want that first page to actually have a number? Like maybe it's your cover page, for example. So to do this, we need to create a new section for all the pages that should be numbered. So right click on the first page you want to number and then choose numbering and sections. Then click OK. This creates a new section and you'll likely get a warning message because it could be a bit confusing since both your old section and your new section starts with a one. So let's fix that. We're going to right click uh, on the page where we want to remove that page number. So like your cover and then choose override parent items. And then we can just remove that number from there to add more pages to your document. Just click the plus icon at the bottom. Or if you want to reuse the layout you already created, right click the page and choose duplicate. If you want to remove a page, just select the page and right click and choose delete. To rearrange pages, you can drag and drop them where you would like them to go instead. If you would need to move it quite far, it can be easier to just right click and choose move. And then you can just specify where in the document you want that page to be moved to. The last thing I want to show you before we dive into the actual designing are the bleed and preview settings. Down here at the bottom, you can choose how you want to view the document. So if you right click it, you can choose to view the bleed settings. So that way you can make sure the design is prepared with the background, any images that they want all the way out to the outer edge of the bleed. So now that our document is set up, we can actually start creating our design. If you want to add that grid for kind of guidance, you can click layout and then create guides. When you create guides, you can then choose if you want them to be set across the entire page or just inside the margins. If you're designing a document, I suggest keeping everything inside the margins. But if you're designing something with a full width design, like a poster, for example, you might want to have the page setting instead. So to add text, you choose this text icon from the left hand menu and drag the box to the size you'd like. You can then type or paste in your text from another document. To reformat your text, just double click to mark all the text and then use your character panel here at the top. You can change the font, size, weight and the space between the rows using this button here. If you want to change your text box, you can also just reshape it by clicking and dragging the edges like this. Once you have a text formatting that you like, you can also replicate it in other parts of your document by just clicking I for the eyedropper tool 
and first clicking on the sample that you want to copy and then highlighting all the text that you want to change. To add an image, there are two main strategies. You can simply drag the image into the document and then resize and place it as you like. Another option is to create a shape that you want the image to have, like a placeholder, and then drag the image into it. This can be a great efficient strategy if you want to first block out all your information using just color blocks and then replace them with the actual images later down the road. Once you added your image, make sure to embed it so it doesn't appear blurry when you go to print or work on the project maybe later on. So to do this, just click the links panel and on the image, right click and choose embed. There are a few different ways you can style your image. So to change what part of the image is seen, just double click and move the image around. To round the corners of your image, with your image selected, choose Object and Corner Options. Here you can choose to round one or more of the different corners. If you want to rearrange any of your elements so that some are in the front and some are in the back, just right click on the image and text box and choose Send to Back or Send to Front. In the same way, you can reflect or rotate an image by right clicking and choosing one of the transform options here. You can also create graphics right in InDesign. The simplest ones are basic shapes and you can just use the shape builder for this, but you can also use the pen tool to create unique shapes from scratch. This is perfect if you want a more kind of organic shape background or even want to create some graphics right in InDesign. Finally, we're ready to export our artwork. Start by making sure all your images are linked then head up to File, Export, and add a name to your file. You also need to select the format that you want the final file to have. So for print, choose PDF for print, but you also have other options if you'd like. Then click Save, and that will open this panel with lots of options, but there are only a few things you need to pay attention to. So first, choose the more specific format for the file. I have almost always used high quality print unless the printer asks for one of these other formats, so that's a pretty safe default. Next up in compression, we just want to make sure our images are set up to high quality, which means setting them to 300 here and to maximum. For marks and bleed, make sure the box is ticked to include your bleed settings that we created first when we set up the file. And you also have the option to include things like crop and bleed marks if that's something that the printer has asked for. Then we can head to advanced and this number here says 100%, so let's change that to 0%. That just means that any fonts that the printer might not have will be embedded and it won't change when they actually go to print. And finally, have a look in the summary tab for any warnings. And then we can click export. I really hope this helped you feel a little bit more confident working in InDesign and that you were able to pick up some new tips. I would love to hear if you have a favorite tip that maybe we missed, so make sure to leave that down in the comments. And if you watched all the way till the end of the video, maybe leave a little book icon so I know that you're here. Thank you so much for watching. Good luck with your projects and I'll see you next time.